Good afternoon, ladies. My name is Pauline, and this is Dada's Welcome. It's Sunday, it's 4 p.m., and it's another great show. Today, we want to talk about an um, interesting matter. How can you be single and rock being single? Many of us, um, we are prepared for, from childhood to be married. So um, I want to unpack it with a lady called Wan Maria Wanza. Hi, okay. Maria. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good. Tell us a bit about yourself. Um, my name is Maria. I am an actress and a media consultant. Yes. That's what you do? Yes. Uh, tell us a bit about who are you? I ask this question to ladies all the time, and they always tell me what they do. They say, oh, I am Pauline, and I am a TV host. That's not who I really am. So who is Maria? Uh, Maria is somebody who believes in God, who loves God. Um, I'm very ambitious, and I'm a go-getter. Um, but I'm also somebody who has learned to wait on God and trust on go and trust in God. And I've also learned that life sometimes doesn't happen the way you planned it. But also, uh, you can uh, swing with the blows as they go. Okay. Yeah, just swing with it and you'll be fine. Okay. Yes. Maria, I wanted to ask you, did you grow up like every one of us with uh, an idea of a fairy tale wedding and uh, you'd wear white and you had a gown and you'd walk down an aisle? Is that something <laughs> that you thought about when you were growing up? Every girl thinks about it. But for me, I grew up uh, a lot like a tomboy. But um, at some point, eh, you gully up because you get to a, pl a place where you're told uh, this is how this is how women uh, behave, this is how ladies behave, this is what what what. So you kind of grow out of it, but the ambition and the speed and the what you still have it. Um, I grew up knowing I want to get married, but it was not something that I was desperate for. Now l a little about my background: my mom is a single mom. And she's like the best. Everybody knows that their mother is the best, really. But she's very strong. To have co four kids and then be very strong for them throughout. Very, very strong woman. But um, I always say in a setting of a single mother, which a lot of us single, uh, when, you're, when we're having children, we don't think about that. The children will look at it differently. They're those who will go out and, and have children out of wedlock. Um, it will be something that they will do. Yeah, we'll continue with, uh, the, uh, uh, with the cycle. Mm. But then there are those ones who will get frightened and literally see the pain they've gone through, literally see um, the struggle, and then go like, I really do not want to have this in my life. And without support, they're seeing, eh, this person just woke up, left one day, and, you know. So now you're seeing your mom struggle. You're seeing her hustle. Every day is a struggle. Um, when you have it good, you don't have it good for too long. And then you get to a point where you say, you know what, eh? I don't think this is a path I want to take. So that decision was, I made it. I think life made it for me. Because then I saw it, I thought, okay, I really can't do this. And it's not like I didn't have boyfriends, but I had boyfriends. I had a boyfriend who, I had boyfriends, but one of them who I really knew I was going to marry um, was a Christian who really mistreated me. Um, but then I learned how to get out of it, how to forgive and how to let go. Um, you know, those, go those guys who are very good with verbal abuse, which is worse than emotional abuse or being f or physical abuse. And then they tell you, you tell them, I'm going to tell you your pastor. And they say, the pastor will believe you or believe me, who he has known, who ha he has known forever. Yeah. So I got to a point where I, s I told myself, um, Okay, at some point, it was about, I do not want that drama again. So you just have little relationships here and there. But then you're, not, you're thinking to yourself, no, it's not working out. Uh, but then the drama is what I don't like. Okay. Yeah, the drama of all that. So I decided it's okay. I'm good. Okay. Yeah. I, I think my question to you is, um, when you think about it now, mm. Vision 2020, Yes. And you're still very marriageable, by the way. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You're still very beautiful. So I think there are still some men, Kwanzaa, after this show, who will be calling you. So Thank don't you. write yourself off, off yet. Eh? <laughs> but looking back now, when you think about it, you, you said two things that were profound for you, mm. which is you didn't want to grow up and have a marriage that didn't work. W one. For you, that was very important. It has to work. Critical. It has to work yes. because you didn't want to be a single mom. Yes, now. And the second, so therefore you never really went out to have children because 
how has this thing ever been floated to you, Maria? Even if you don't get married, at least have a child. Can I tell you that's a chorus? <laughs> I think they they have a chorus from outside my house to all the way to work, <laughs> then back, then whichever whatever I'm doing, <laughs> that is usually a chorus, and it also starts from home because I have siblings who ask, why can't you get a kid? Oh, your age is catching up. But for me, it's very very clear to me. Um, it's not like I don't want to get married, but the thing is this. Um, I do not want somebody who I become their shadow. I am not going to shrink for somebody to rise. That I'm very clear about. Wait a minute. Now that's profound. Yes. I want to. Uh, I want to br uh, talk about that a bit. Do you sense that in order for you to be married, yes. you'd have to cut back on your ambition? Yes, because I have experienced it. This unajoila sees Pauline sees storya apokwa barabara rumors. I have actually gone out with guys where uh, it has become an issue what I do. So you have to literally shrink back. When I talk to you about what I want to do, I'll only tell you one, two things. The rest of me is hidden. The rest of me is hidden. Okay. Why? Because um, it's what uh, Chimamanda Ngozi says, that we teach our girls to shrink. We teach our girls, you can be successful, but not so successful, so that you, don't, you keep his ego. You can be strong, but not too strong. For me, I know about submission. I actually believe the man is the head of the home. That one I'm very clear about. But what I'm also clear about is that I'm not going to shrink for you to shine. But Maria, if you know about submission, yes. that, now that's interesting. Doesn't submission therefore mean that your husband is the head of the home. Yes, it does. Your boyfriend, therefore, yes. uh, is the one running the show. Yes. And therefore, you have to sort of, you have to pull back. Not necessarily. Somebody who is comfortable in their skin will allow you to shine. Are oh. you understanding? Yeah. If you have a dream, Pauline, and somebody is comfortable in their skin, they will actually trigger your dream. They will ask you, why are you not moving forward with this? They will want you to be bigger than you are right now. They will just say, this is a springboard. Man, you can become bigger. Okay. Because they're not threatened. They're comfortable in their skin. They're okay. Okay. Let's go back. Yes. To, 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 to rewind. Yes. Isn't it also true that women are taught not to be very strong, yes. not to be very powerful, yes. not to be too amazing yes. because if you are too amazing nobody, no man has the guts to talk to you. Um, and that is why it's a patriarchal setting. We, we, when people talk about dismantling patriarchy, it's not about male bashing. You're not out there hitting men and what what. It's a system we fight against. Okay. Meaning my little girl, our little girls must be taught to be strong. They must be taught to be all that and a cherry on top. They must be taught that they can get to whichever height they want to be. Okay, wait, but wait. Isn't now that the new problem? That the women are too powerful and the men now we have to... The, if This is my story. Yes. If you're so powerful, then the guy who wants to marry you must be two times as powerful as you. That now if you are so hot... How hot must he be? You and see, where are you going to find this guy? Uh, 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 I don't know, Pauline. <laughs> because, Pauline <laughs> Rosafi, I am not walking in the path of shadows. I'm not going to be somebody's shadow so that then they shine. You will shine, I will shine. I will push your dream forward as your wife, as your girlfriend, you will push mine forward. Okay. I will respect you. I will pray for you. I will commit you to God and I will push you forward to become the best. If I meet you as a uh, whatever, millionaire, billionaire, whoever, or whatever. You'll make, you'll make me a zillionaire. I will make you because God says um, uh, 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 a wife is a good thing and a letter favor. Mm. But what I will not do is I'm not going to shrink for you. Do you think that that's one of the reasons why you have not perhaps entered the wonderful institution? Uh ni kwambie. <laughs> Two things. My friends who got married in their 20s, uh, now they're in their 40s, like I am, uh, they are actually 90% are divorced. And mostly not divorced officially, in separation. Okay. You know, drama, drama. So, is this drama I can live with? 
Now you, you got married. Now somebody's walking away. And these are Christian men. Serious. They're in church. Okay. okay? And they were married. When, when they were getting married, they were being told, all of you get married. All of you being pushed. Pastors are pushing you into marriage. Even when I go to church and you tell me, Ati, eh, you know those prophecies. I see 21 gowns. God is releasing them this year. You'll never, say, you'll never find me saying, I am one of them. Okay. Eh, no. Okay. Mm. My next question it's very challenging to live like a single person yes. in a world that is created for marriage. Yes. In the sense that many of the institutions are created for marriage. Um, even in church. Things Especially are for, in church. Yeah, things are yes. for couples. Yeah. Valentine's is for couples. Yes. Holidays are for families. Yes. Uh, even uh, Usha Go is for, is for family. Yes. When people are, st are standing up, like for example, when there's a family function mm. and people are standing up, they say, eh, familia ya so and so, si mama. Now familia ya Maria is just one person. How do yeah. you deal with that? Um, I'm comfortable in my skin. I'm comfortable in my truth and in my journey. So uh, people usually are the ones with the issue, not me. Me, I'm actually okay. Because one of the things I've come to accept, Pauline, is, you know, the other day, you know, actually how you sit and you think about it and you tell God, you know, God, one, I'm not getting a kid out of wedlock. That is not even an option for me. Not that children out of wedlock are not precious. They are precious. It's okay. Everybody is entitled to their opinion. But for me, as a serious Christian, I am not going to walk that path. Do even Christian people, because I've had this a lot, yes. do even Christian people walk up to you and say, Maria, just have a child? Oh, yes, yes, have yes, you, yes. Have yes. you had invitations oh. from men who've said, I'm a believer, I'm a pastor, like you watch a tupate mtoto na wewe? Eh, dio sana, dio. Hiyo, hiyo di dio sana. And so and me... And especially, my, are you, are you, uh, uh, do you get picked on by married men a lot? Yes, and it's a bit annoying. As a sidebar. As, as a, a sidebar. Side yes, yes. You, because you, you because serve as a very good, look, you are very vulnerable out there. Is. You serve as a side dish for somebody with, so, a, with an idea. Uh -huh. So it's, that's why a lot of our Christian ladies were single, end up with married men. Yes. You get. Yes. So they get pregnant, and then this guy looks at you and tells you, I am not leaving my wife. Oh, shock on you. You thought he was going to leave your wife for you. Hey, you, m you must be dreaming something else. Okay. So what I do is I made that decision. Okay. And that is a path. The beauty about God is when you make a decision, no matter how hard it is, um, he will be aware of it. And you're depending on him. So that's a decision I made. Watch ni kwambie, leave married ma men alone. You know people just say, Adio, that married man is moving around. You know there are married women who pray. Mm. You can catch fire in town. Mm. <laughs> nguo. Mutu kwa naomba prayers very serious at midnight. <laughs> Wole nda kushika bwana yake. Even if the man is following you, leave him alone. He doesn't love you. Is that a sidebar? Hey. For all the people who sponsors. The, ma the, married the married women, you can catch fire. Kuna wegine wanaobaga usiku saa sita. Utashika voto Nairobi utoe nguo. Leave his, uh, his husband, her husband, her alone. husband alone. You will catch fire, yeah, yeah. In this town, you will catch fire. Really? Leave it. Because there are people who are very serious about God. Mm. And they are praying for their husbands. Mm. And this man doesn't care. Him. He just thinks, mm. I can sleep around. Mm. I can be happy. And he's in church. Okay. He's a pastor or he's a leader or whatever. And I can get away with it. Mm. But he doesn't know what prayers the wife is, is praying. Okay. And this is serious. Okay. So people, when, when I see people doing that, I always say, you have no idea. And this I learned from a friend of mine. Um, there's a church, uh, th th there's this guy who approached her and uh, they went out like twice, thrice. So she didn't know the guy was married. He didn't have his ring. Of course, they, half of them are not wearing their rings. Mm. So they go to New Stanley, true story. They go to New Stanley and then now uh, she's talking to the guy and says, uh, by the way, you've not told me about your marital status. Are you married or are you single? The guy said she's married. You know how they say, uh, but I'm, I'm thinking of a divorce. If you what, 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 what. So my friend, Ati, that lady always is in church. So she mentioned, he, she asked him, which church does he go to? And she, does she go to? So the, lady, the guy said, my friend, Aliamuka eh, New Stanley, na vitu zake, na kamambia, you don't love me. Please go and disappear and if possible, die. That church, I will be prayed for. In this city, I will not walk. Mm. Those women are serious. They pray for their husbands. So what, whatever, and it would affect you as the, as the guy. It will affect the lady. Okay. So leave. Leave this man alone. Okay. Are there opportunities that have come to you because you're a single person? Yes. What are they? What, what perhaps can you say, these have been my terrible challenges, but this is the flip side. Every coin has got two sides. Are there is this something that has come to you because you were single and you were able to 
can't quickly jump on it. Uh, for example? I would say, do you have, do you seem, well, in my opinion, you must have a lot more time than other people. Yes, I do. Like than the married people. Yes. What do you do with your time? Um, I'm also a media consultant. Okay. So I work a lot. The beauty about it is I don't have to ask anybody for permission. Yes. I only report at home because I stay with my mom who got a stroke, who's recover recovering from a stroke from 2016. So if, isn't that even, like so I, isn't that something that you can do because you're single? Because if yes. my mom had a stroke, yes. God forbid, mm. that m she may she never have a stroke. Yes. But if my mom was unwell, it would be very difficult for me to move in with her. I can go and visit, but I can't mm. move in. I know. So you see, the advantage is, uh, one thing I have come to learn about old people, uh, it's been up nearly four years. You have to, one of your siblings has to be with them. Yes. Even if you have a very good house girl like I do, I have a very good house manager and she's a beautiful beautiful so God bless her. But one of the things I have also come to appreciate is that one of the kids has to be there. Mm -hmm. So that's the advantage. I can watch over her, I take care of her, but you know, I can also travel. Yes. I travel, um, I do whatever it is I want. I have so many projects running at the same time and I sleep at 1, 2 a.m., wake up at around 6 or wake up at 5, depending on my program or schedule of the day. So it helps me to do a lot more. And it helps me also. One of the things, Pauline, honestly, I have found is I don't have somebody speaking in my ear telling me it's impossible. I don't have impossible in my uh, dictionary. And I don't have somebody who second guesses me because I don't like being second guessed. What I like is tell me, uh, let's have even my business partners, all of them, they know, and they are all men. Unfortunately, very few are women. I think I have only two or one. The, we sit down and we brainstorm and then they say, okay, so you can do this, you can do this, follow up on this. And they never second guess me. But most of my business partners are old men. They're in their 60s and 70s because they're not terrified about my greatness. Okay. And they're not terrified. I'm not terrified about how great they are and how big they are and whatever they've accomplished. In fact, I'm in awe. But they also tell me, do not be in awe of me. Do okay. not put me in a, on a pedestal. I'm a human being. So consequently, it has also rubbed on me. Okay. I don't like people put me on pedestals or think I'm doing great or what, what. Don't do that for me. Okay. Yeah. But Maria, my last question, mm. Ishish, would be, is there a type of woman who perhaps, is there a place for single, for being single as a woman, S not being married? Is there such a place? Do you feel that perhaps there's a, a kind of woman who, if you think about it, would do better if they never married? And this is a question I know I'll be bashed for, but is, is that such a place like, it's okay, don't get married. And don't have children. You know how I talk to God is the way I talk to you. Mm. So I always tell him, if you don't give me somebody who will not second guess me, somebody will support me, somebody I will be able to support. I don't have to. My friend has a children's home. Those kids forever are in need. I will adopt all of them, quite literally. I'll be going there, taking care of their needs and doing what? Because you're busy working. You're busy doing your hustle. So at the end of the day, I don't really have to get this, to go down this road. Mm. Of course, you will miss the times when you can call somebody and tell them, run them. Which, which is what I wanted to ask you. Yes. Don't you feel lonely? Isn't there what is lonely? Define lonely. Lonely is aloneness. Like you have no one to talk to. Like but when I you have people around me like all the time. Like when you go home. Like when you go home. When I go home, I'm on business calls. Mm -hmm. Up to 1 a.m., 2 a.m. I'm so tired. I'm just lamping on bed, doing my midnight prayers, sleeping, waking up, and running. What define loneliness to me? Loneliness is don't you, don't you have, like if something amazing happens, you need that one person you call. I have my mom, uh -huh. I have my business partners, and I have others. Because you see, that's not a, a door I opened. It's not a door I open. Yeah, I always tell myself, the door that you open, and it stays open, instead of you locking it, that's the door that starts to call you and to make you do crazy things. So for me, um, I'm busy. When I keep busy, it helps me. Okay. So I make sure that my schedule is tight. Do you ever have moments where you wish you were married? Yes. 
like watch movies um, like those. when you wish like now when everybody's talking about valentine's yeah. day what yeah. but then it only happens for two seconds and then i remember all my friends who are sad from marriage <laughs> and then i remember i or do like, not or want like christmas don't you ever feel like christmas day is really bad like because because now christmas but i'm with my family those family days yeah i'm with my family yeah but your family come with their children don't you ever feel pressure no but see i'm hanging out with my mom and we're traveling with my mom and we're doing things with my mom Okay. So it, it's not that he, you know what I do? I don't open doors that I don't want to be in. Okay. Because what you do, what happens is this: if you open a door, like um, I've been told, um, you know, as a human being, you have to have sex. So do you have to have what? You have yeah, to I have what? I was afraid to ask you about uh, that. No, one. you can ask me. <laughs> Listen. I was afraid to ask you about Pauline, the sex. Have you even bit? been called a lesbian? <laughs> so usually I start with a disclaimer: <laughs> I am single, but I'm not a lesbian. <laughs> I don't have a problem with lesbians. But I am single <laughs> because everybody asks you. I was, what I is wrong with you? You know, you know the, the thing about those this, questions. This story eh? mm. is that everybody thinks about it, but nobody no, has the audacity. No, I have Even the audacity. I was afraid to ask. You I to have the audacity show. to talk about anything. You know, this is what God taught me in mm. my journey. He taught me, don't open a door that you will wish you had had stayed closed. So I don't expose myself. At Davi movies, do what, 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 what? Those things that are confusing, don't expose yourself. Okay. Help yourself. And people always say, you know, let me tell you, whatever you focus on becomes your reality. That's true. The end. Nobody should lie to you. Whatever you focus on, Aki, it becomes your reality. So, so you try to focus on the things that matter to you at this time. Yes. Because there's business. no point of, of watching uh, Lavi Davi movies because you don't have a partner. Ebu nikulize. Sasa even do utendo upate mimba inje, utendo ufanye nini, utendo after that married guy who's been sumbwaring me on WhatsApp or on, uh, because they're always there on WhatsApp. Sasa, I saw you. Uh, can I talk to you? Okay. And some of them, they're not telling you they're married. So after a while, they tell you. By the way, I have to talk to my children. You're thinking, you didn't tell me. Mm. So I don't open doors I don't want to go through. And I'm happy because I'm focused on what I'm doing. I'm focused on my truth. I'm focused on my journey. I'm focused on God. And I have my mom to worry about. Okay. When you have a stroke person, eh, then you realize your life changes in two seconds. Mm. In two seconds, selfish selfishness ends ends completely. You really have now to focus. Okay. To focus on her so that then you don't have eventualities. So it has helped me also. Okay. It has molded my world because my focus is very clear. It's very, very clear. Thinking about just your your journey and how you got here and how you've coped, eh? do you have people who you've looked up to? Do you have any mentors on this journey? Have you been alone? What what have you read? Because the reason I'm asking you this question is many women will spend quite a bit of, today, will spend quite a bit of their time single. And wishing that they were married. And, wish, and most of them will waste most of their single time dreaming about walking the island, being romantic. You understand? Yes. And waste a lot of time what, in what I call kissing frog, frogs activities. Exactly. Which is running around, trying this, trying that, trying that. What has been, for example, how did you learn to be single? Because I read a lot from women who are single. Okay. And I also, uh, some of them are believers, some of them are not believers. But there's a lady who encouraged me. Um, about six, seven years ago, I read her story on Oprah's uh, magazine. I read a lot of Oprah, you know, I can have had what, 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 those magazines. So you get very nice, diverse stories from around the world. So <laughs> this lady, she had gotten married and then gotten divorced at a very young age. Then for 40 years, she didn't get married. Then she was, and then she met her high school sweetheart who they yeah. lost each other along the way for 40, 50 something years. Then suddenly they were rekindled. So what happened was this. She was asked a question. How did you not get married again for 40 years? She said, I was too busy following my dreams. Then it sank within my spirit that actually you can follow your dreams and be too busy for other things. Because you're, you're inside the country, you're outside the country, you're doing your thing, you're doing you, you're living your journey, and the rest of the people are the ones who have a problem with you. You, you're just living your life. Okay. So I realized, you can actually live your life. You don't have to be dictated to by those guys around you. Let them live their journey. Kila mutu yake. Ivo Thank you, Maria. L l let's go into a break. Eh? Okay. Uh, <laughs> when we come back, <laughs> we'll be inviting Reverend Jackie Othoro um, to just come and speak into this situation. Thank you, Maria.
You're welcome. What would we do without you? <laughs> Welcome back to Dadas. Today we've been talking about being single and, and not just for a short time, but being single for a long time and rocking being single. And um, we've had Maria unpack it really well. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. For sharing that you can be single, you can be in your 40s and be happy. Yes. Welcome, Reverend Jackie Othoro. Thank you. I know you've been single for many years. Yes. And uh, like Maria... Um, you didn't have children. You chose not to have children. That's Why? Right. You, you went right there. No, mm -hmm. <laughs> I dove. I dove right in. I dove right in. Why not have children? Because I I believe in a process. And the one that I grew up with was meet the guy, fall in love, get married, have children. I haven't changed my script or process yet. Okay. And the older I'm getting, the less likely I am to change that script. That's true. Yeah. I don't think you're changing it now. No. Okay. I don't Did you think meet so. many guys? Yeah. I asked Maria the same question. She said she met some people, mm. but they were just not, they were not, they were like, oh. and because she was looking for, she had high standards. Mm. Could it also be like for you? Did you have high standards that you refused to lower? I had standards. Mm. I mean, we, you need to have standards. <laughs> I mean, you've got to at least have a place where you say, okay, this far and no more. So I did have standards. I don't know whether they were high per se. I, mean, I think they were high. Uh, well, let, let I, me I, I, I think they were a bit high. <laughs> because Cause I had standards, but I lowered mine. You lowered yours. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> did, you, did, you low, did you lower? I, I paid the consequences for lowering, lowering my standards. Yeah. But did you have high standards which you were like, I am not lowering this. I cannot go below here. I think the standard that I had that I would not go below was the man had to have exactly the same faith that I had. That was my standard. The other ones were, you know, you could play around with. I mean, I had, I come from a family of very tall people. I'm the shortest in my family, and I'm five foot seven. Ooh. So, you know, I thought, you know, I can't bring a guy who's five foot two or five foot into my family <laughs> when some of my family members are six foot eleven. That was a real that, standard. That was a standard. I mean, I had to have a guy with a little bit of height. You know, like, so that my younger brother. But you're five seven. Five seven is a tall woman. I'm not short. Yeah. Yeah. Where were exactly. you going to get a so guy who's five nine, hey, six yeah, feet? Yeah. Wako. Wako. <laughs> Okay. But I told you, those are those standards that you know you, you play around with and say, okay, yeah. like, let's get real. But that one you could have lowered, eh? Yes, I could have lowered that okay. one. Okay. The one I would not have lowered was his faith. Mm. Because what would I have then to walk in journey with life if someone in their fundamental beliefs is very different from me? Okay. You know, the Bible says, you know, two cannot walk together unless they agree. Mm. Now, the deepest agreement point for me is that we believe in the same Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Trinity in the Christian gospel. And, uh, and we are serving him. So if I could not find that compatibility, it was not worth taking the journey down the altar. Because being a pastor, I have seen the crazy that happens mm -hmm. when two people who are not matched get married. Okay. Mm -hmm. And to take it a step further, you could find somebody who's matched in faith mm -hmm. with you, but in other areas, you're so incompatible. How do you know that? Yes. You've got to journey and walk. Mm. You can't walk into relationships with your eyes closed. No, you can't. That's they say a, this. Could that they be the this. problem with you people? No. That you actually opened your eyes very the wide. The, the rest of very us decided wide. to close them. <laughs> they are more kidding. Very wide. Because guys say, before yes. you get married, have your mm. eyes completely wide. Mm. And after you get married, close them. Close them a little bit. Because yeah. there are things that you'll see in marriage that you'll say, uh... Uh, I should have known this, but since I didn't, let me live with it. Mm. But for me, because I learned a lot post, you know, when I was older, when guys were getting married, I was busy studying. Mm. You know, my friends were getting married in their mid-twenties. I was, I was getting into the ministry. Then I went to study again. And then the more I studied, uh, people would tell me the less likelihood you are to get yeah, married because yeah. you're studying too yeah. much. And I, I couldn't stop the path I was walking on mm. for the hope mm. that if I sit at a bus stop, somebody will walk by and will say, hi, Jackie. <laughs> no. I had to keep moving forward. But the more I moved forward, my friends who are now getting married, they were getting kids now. And they were saying, okay, Jackie, you're hitting your 30s. You know, you're getting married. And I'm saying, no. I, I, when the time comes, it'll happen. If it doesn't happen, I'll keep moving forward. Mm -hmm. Then I hit my 40s. And the questions got less. 
I turned glorious 53 Woo-hoo! years ago. Uh-huh. Interestingly, it is starting again. It's mm. almost like you're in your 50s now. So you do what you want to do. You do you. But I wanted to ask you this. It's a question I asked Maria before. Mm. Can you be single and satisfied? Is there, is there, can you be not, I don't, I'm not, I'm not talking about, because you know what? We all think of marriage as this space where it's mm. euphoria utopia. And, and utopia, yes. especially when you're single. Mm. When you're single, the grass is greener on the on other the side, yes. and there there's utopia going mm. on. Can you just be on your side of the fence and be happy? Mm. Is that possible? Let me tell you what a friend uh, said some years back. That marriage is like a fly up against a, a glass. Those who are married are dying to get out, mm-hmm. and those who are single are dying to get in. You know, so you're always looking at the other state as better than the one that you're in. Mm-hmm. I think your satisfaction in either state is a choice that you have to make, mm-hmm. irrespective of the circumstances or the people around you. Because I've heard of people in marriages that are really nasty marriages. But they make the choice that we said I do, for better or for worse. And so we're going to stay here and figure out how to make this work in this, in this mm-hmm. uh, situation. Mm-hmm. For others, the choice, and it's, sometimes it is a good choice, to leave. Mm-hmm. Because I would never advocate for a woman to stay in a marriage that is violent. You know, uh, what, what would I be doing with a dead person? Mm-hmm. You know, how do I comfort the dead person? That's true. You know, so if it's violent and your life is at risk... You'd best, you know, you'd better remove yourself. The same thing I'd say for single people. So you can be single, and I'm not single by choice. I, I call myself an, a non-committed single. <laughs> That's very, yeah. very sad. Non-committed because How can you not be committed ah, no, at, at I have, this point. I have not bought the card. I don't have uh, the T-shirt. I have not been on Oprah about but Maria, it. But Maria, no. Maria it seems committed. So no, I'm not, not committed. committed. I'm not committed because. What does that mean? What does it mean to be non-committed? What it means is that I am not sold to the pa- the fact that you know I'm 50 and you're single and that's end of the story. No. Mm-hmm. So you actually you, you are, so at any given moment, yes. if you meet the yes. guy who is taller than you and the Hopefully same level taller, of faith, yes. so I'll wear flat shoes all the and time, and then you will just jump. You will abandon the, the singles right club. Trip. Oh, quickly! Very quickly! I'll hand in my card. <laughs> I'll hand Maria, in my you card. No, even no, even you, you are non-committed. No, you see, for me, you see, for me, I'm I'm also on that boat of non-committed. Mm. The idea is you make sure that you're not jumping into something because exactly. everyone is jumping into it. Exactly. And then later, you're sitting together in an inni, you're saying, my husband is so bad, yeah, you know yeah, what, yeah. you, my husband yes. is so bad. Mm-hmm. So what were, what were you doing exactly? What were you doing? Because when you get in, you'll have to get in with your eyes mm-hmm. open. Make this decision with a very sober mind, not euphoric. I think, I think you, you ladies... No, no because it, mm-hmm. it's true. There's nothing worse yes. than leaving where you are happy mm-hmm to go into another state where you're miserable. Mm. I'd rather be happy and single than be married and miserable. Mm. Because we've seen people, I mean, uh, we're just dealing with a situation in church where um, a, a woman was killed wow. by her husband. Really? Yes, and nobody saw it coming. Like he, he, he what did he do? He strangled her? He, okay, whatever. Yeah, I won't go into details. She, di- she died. Like she, she died. She, didn't died. Die. she was killed. She was killed. You know, die, you can sleep and you can do yeah. No, she was killed. She was murdered. She was murdered by her husband. And this was simply uh, the reason why we don't know. He tried to make it a double, you know, a, a, a murder-suicide. Mm. But it didn't work yeah. for him. Yeah. But, and, and so the person's in custody right now. Wow. The question was, how miserable was that marriage? And was terrible. Why didn't one not walk away? It's true. And you know what Reverend is saying is very true because um, there are marriages that work. Actually, oh there are yeah. marriages that are perfect, that oh are yes. working. The uh, uh, imperfect making it perfect. Yeah, you understand? Yeah, yeah. Because there's nothing perfect. Yeah. Um, and you work together by the grace and the masses of God. Mm. Now, I have a friend who, like she was, uh, she, uh, she, she was giving an example. This friend of mine was dying with a husband. And she was getting her first baby. And this guy, at six months, hit her so hard. Alimpiga paka kamupiga tumbo. Mm. The baby was getting out. Akenda kwa Johnson Stitch. Mm. At what point mm. do you get there? Mm. I even told a friend of mine, I'm sending you a direct mm. message. If she doesn't want to leave that guy, I'm mm. not coming for her funeral. Mm. Because we are having to pray. You know those funny prayers? Dear God, let her be, stay alive. Mm. Walk out mm. of the thing. When, when she walks out, 
Then two days later, we find them together. Mm. Oh, yeah, By yeah, the yeah. time that she happened. was leaving, mm. is because she, the, there was a situation. She, uh, the guy, because now he had, she had become a Christian and the guy was a Muslim. There was a situation about their first baby. And it was not a good thing. So she had to walk away. And she mm. walked away because we were literally shouting at her. Mm. This thing is going to cause you to die. At okay. some point, mm. you, 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 do, would you rather stay in the marriage and die? Because she didn't want to be single. She was asking, how will people see me? Yeah. Mm. Uh, I, I think I really want to go back to my question because mm. it's a really important question. And it's to both of you. Mm. What are the things I do if I'm single mm. to ensure that I am a successful single person, mm. that I am a happy single person, mm. that I'm not living my singlehood mm. in misery mm. and wasting my life mm. thinking about how I, I want to be married tomorrow. Mm. I live in a state of desperation because I think that's really important. Mm. So I accept I am single. Yeah. And you know, it's funny. <coughs> you can be single, get married, become a widow. Single, get yes, married, yeah. yes. have children, uh, get separated, mm -hmm. get divorced. Yes. Many things can happen to you. Mm. So being single is a state that you can you can actually get out mm. of and get back to. Mm. Yes. So you have to learn how to be single. Mm. And I feel that if you're a, a satisfied single person, you'll mm. probably be a, a satisfied married person. Oh, yes. I think yes. so, too. Yes. I agree. Isn't it? I if agree. You're, if mm. I, I know how to be satisfied when I'm single, mm. I'll probably be a satisfied married person. Mm. But yes. if I'm not happy as a single person, I'll probably be mm. a very bad married person. Yes. Reverend, what do you have to say? These are just my sort of my thoughts that I think in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> when you're putting on your makeup before you face the world. Yes. <laughs> One of the things that I, I learned over time you know, as the years went by, because I was like, you know, like Maria said, mm -hmm. I, I did grow up with that image that I'd hit 24, find a man, 26, get married, 28, first child, 30, second child. If there's a, an extra child, 32. Yeah. I mean, I had that script. You had a plan. I had a plan. Yeah. It didn't work that way. So the question was, would I be sitting in a corner hoping that that plan would unfold yeah. or would I then figure out then who is Jackie as Jackie? Who is she as this individual woman? Because I'm whole in myself. Mm -hmm. There's nothing missing. There's nothing lost here. Yes. I am whole and complete. Yes. So who am I as a woman? And I had to go on a journey of figuring that out. And, and it came about in my 40s, in my mid-40s. And, and you may have heard me say this. I have this uh, thing called finding your voice. Mm -hmm. you know, and you've got to find yourself so that you can be of value to you and to society. And voice is just a simple acronym. So what are your values? What values do you espouse? You know, many times we are, we are struggling with single women who we say have lost all their value platform. So they will go anywhere, do anything to supposedly live a life that they think they're meant to be living. You know, do you have integrity? Do you have a sense of self-worth? You know, are you a happy person? Are you family-oriented? Because if I'm family-oriented, I'll never Go for another person's husband. Imagine. Exactly. Yes. Because why would yes. I destroy a family to form I, another, to form another. my own fake family? No. You, know. you know. And this lie that there are more women than men in the world, please, you're in the wrong country. <laughs> there are some countries where they don't have women. Go. Yes, they can you know, so, so, you know, what are your, what's your value system? Mm -hmm. You know, and can you uphold it? It's a clear system. Mm -hmm. And then the O is what occupies you. What do you spend your time doing? Mm -hmm. You know, what are the things that bring you joy? Um, are you engaged in, I've got a, a friend of mine who, I, I think she's crazy because she loves climbing mountains, but she'll take herself to the Himalayas. She's single in her 40s. She will climb, you know, long or not, and next month she's climbing some mountain in South Africa. And next time she's off to uh, Tibet, and I'm looking at her, but she is occupying herself with what she loves doing. She loves people and she loves walking. You know, so her life is full in what she occupies. Yeah. Maybe somebody, you know, loves to stitch. Mm. Maybe someone loves doing what you're doing, mm. having a talk show. Mm. Now we have all ways in which you can have, you know, forums to talk to people. Mm. You know, so what occupies your time? Are you sitting in a corner moping? Or are you getting on with your life because you've got things that keep you happy? Mm. And then I is your identity. You know, who are you? You know, when it's dark and you're in a dark room and it's midnight, who are you? If I poke you, what comes out of you? Have you figured out who you are? 
you know, um, there's some people who have a very iconic physical identity. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look at them, you just know, even a shadow of them, you know, that's so and so mm -hmm. because they, they've got something that's very mm -hmm. iconic about mm -hmm. them. I had a friend of mine who wears bright scarlet red nail polish. I've never seen her in the 20 plus years I've known her without red nail polish. You know, um, she would never come onto a show like this where, you know, I lost a nail yesterday. I know. And then I didn't replace it. I, I, I mean, she would you, never I do that. I am so proud of you. Thank you very much yeah, for replacing that I came without my nail. nail. Yes, okay. I mean, this is now me. We live. Thank you. <laughs> you would never see her like that because she had me perfectly put together. Mm. But that was her identity. Mm. So what is your identity? What do people know you for? You know, who are you on the inside? And then uh, the C is what is your calling? What is mm. your purpose in life? Do you know what you're put on this earth for. Mm -hmm. Because if you can't figure out what you're put on this earth for, there's something that will be missing mm -hmm. in the general understanding of humanity. Because believe you me, you as an individual have got something of value to give. Mm -hmm. So if I can't figure it out, nobody's gonna do what I've been called to do. Mm -hmm. So if I, if I take some time to figure out my purpose, my direction, where am I going? In five years time, where will I be? In 10 years time, what will I be doing? If you can't figure that out, you'll be stuck. You'll be waiting for this six foot three man to come with amazing hands. I'm just telling you my list. I know. Uh, you know <laughs> to he, had, he had amazing yes. hands. Who has, who has a brown voice? <laughs> Have you ever had a brown voice? We've never had. What's a brown voice? What's a you brown know, that voice? That voice that, you know, where he says hello and everybody just falls over like, oh, <laughs> that, that voice. That was your dream guy. I mean, I mean really. I'll I know. Be, That's sitting it. in a corner You're, waiting for Can him. you imagine you'd be sitting at the yeah, bus stop? At and the what bus if he stop? never came? And he'll never come. He probably yeah. never will because the person exactly. who will be right for me may not be the guy with the brown voice and six foot three. Mm. But I, I've got to know what my purpose is because he may come in and he may take me on another route. That's true. He may deviate me from what I've been called to do. And then the last one is, is E, your experiences. You know, we all go through stuff in life. You know, and the longer you live, the more stuff you go through. And some of it is good, some of it is horrible. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to do about the stuff that you've walked through? I believe the good stuff, you've got to build on it. Yeah. And make it better the next time around. Because things come around in circles. Mm -hmm. You'll meet something again. Mm -hmm. But what about the negative? Sometimes we're too quick to bury our negative experiences mm -hmm. and think nobody needs to know. People think that I'm a pastor now and I was born, born again. Mm. Uh-uh. There's some people who may watch this show who say, but I knew her in college. Mm. And that girl, mm. <laughs> she was up to no good. <laughs> you know, I was at KU and we used to drive past Ruaraka, mm. you know, and the waters of Ruaraka. <laughs> you the know, waters. the waters. <laughs> I mean, I had a past. Mm. But am I going to hide it? Or am I going to say, maybe that could help someone else? Mm -hmm. you know, so you learn from your mistakes. You learn from the challenges that you've had. And you say, how can I do better the next time around? Mm -hmm. So for me, as a single person, I need to have a very clear voice mm -hmm. of who I am. Mm -hmm. I need to find that voice. And the sooner I find it, the happier I will be in my status. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you this. If someone finds me when I found my voice, they will be happier. Mm -hmm. Because yes. they'll be meeting somebody who is content, mm -hmm. who is satisfied, who is happy, who's spreading joy around, mm. who is doing what they love to do, who has very clear values that they will not mm. go against. I mean, really. I mean, you would want to meet that person, getting, wouldn't they're you? They're getting the full package. The yeah. full package. They're getting the full they're getting package. They're getting 100% right? because yeah. it's a lie when you tell someone that you're going to get married, you bring 50% in, and they bring 50% in. That's, 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 that's a lie. That's a lie, isn't it? It's a lie. It's a lie. There's no such thing You've as You've got to take 100% into that relationship. Yes. And so must they. Yeah. So you went at the bus stop, yeah. Yeah. but really at the end of the day, you went at the wrong bus. Yeah. Mm. So you now oh, find yourself so in, yeah. in Kisumu, mm. and you're wondering, okay, I like Kisumu, but I don't know what I'm doing here, yes. and I don't know what happened on the journey. What do yeah. you think about that, Maria? Mm. Um, I think one of the things that people should be very clear about is to be truthful. Don't color it too much. And that just that it doesn't just happen at home. It also happens mm. in churches. Yes. Mm. You're told if you're not married, uh, in fact, you it's should, like you're you half. Should, you should tell the reverend. Uh, no, in fact, this <laughs> reverend, this this reverend is with it. I know, I know her. She should go and tell her friends. I know her. You know now. You know what happens is this. Eh? You're just told uh, you you you're like halfway done, eh? mm. halfway cooked. Mm. If you're not married, mm. it's good to have a spouse. Which, by the way, disclaimer. I am for marriage. Even you, you are, I you are not committed. Marriage. You are, you are uh, running away. Yes, mm. I'm for marriage. But the thing is, what I want is truth. Mm. Prepare this young girl. 
tell her she might actually get into this marriage and get slapped around. Mm. She might actually get into this marriage and this guy is going to cheat or she's going to be unfaithful to this guy. Does she know herself? Can she hold up that bargain? Mm. And then at the end of the day, um, make sure that you're telling her the truth. Choose ye therefore this day. Mm. Because you know what happens? Like when we're growing up, eh? I won't say we church. Uh, that pastor really harakishad people to get married. <laughs> if you are not, there was just a season. Everyone was getting married. Everyone was getting babies. We met two years ago. Half of my friends are separated. Mm. And actually one of our mentors, which was really sad, he's in his second marriage mm. and he actually told us a lot of things. And then mm. he said one thing that was really profound. He asked everyone, and it was funny because we were like three of us who were not married, but two of my friends had kids. But they were asked, and everybody was asked there, because there were like 10, 15 couples, and they were asked, how many of you, if you knew better, would have married the same guy mm -hmm. or married the same woman? Only one raised oh their wow. hand. Mm. Are wow. you getting? This is a church setting. But they may only mm. date Christian men. But they are corrosious. Nasasa, <laughs> uh, God is not giving you an alternative of going out. Mm. Because for me, I believe, like he she was saying, have the same faith, be on the same footing. So that if you have a crisis, you're going to the same God. Yeah. Exactly. It's not you trying no, to pull no, someone. Yeah. You're not going to change this guy. And if it's a guy, you're not going to change this woman. This person is going to stay the way they are. You're not, you're not mm. suddenly the, go, the human changer. Mm. Don't think you have those kind of powers. Mm. Please, ka kwa lini yako. Na ya kai kwa lini yake. Mm. Reverend, what do you think? Do you think we are setting people up to mm. go through life as clones? Because that, yeah. that has always been my biggest yeah. fear. That we, ch we are trying to reproduce a lifestyle that is almost similar. And we have no, we are actually very angry at mm. people who don't fit the box. Yeah, that's, that's actually a very complex uh, situation. Mm. When you look at the 21st century African society, it has changed so dramatically from 20 years ago, 25 years ago, 30 years ago which in the, in the scope of time isn't really a long distance. Mm. But how our grandparents and our parents related and prepared for marriage is nothing like what we're doing today. Mm. They, they may have had things that we're thinking, well, hmm, mm. let me think twice about that. Mm. But the aim was to help people come into a place where you get into marriage that lasts. Mm. That was the foundation. Mm. And so you prepared a woman you know, and this, as you said, someone may shoot this down, but it's the truth. You prepared a woman to be a homemaker. Yes. She learned how to cook. Yes. She learned how to raise kids. I mean, when I was 10 years old, my baby brother was born. So there's a 10-year gap. Yeah. So my mother said, him. I've done no work. You guys look after him. Yeah. We fed him, changed diapers, did all that stuff. You know, we cooked. We learned how to cook very early. You look at young people today. There was, <laughs> it sounds funny, but it was a, ser a serious counseling situation from a colleague, not in the same church where I attend. But this young lady was brought back to her mother's house after the honeymoon yeah. because she couldn't cook. On the first night when they got back to their home, she said, they, they said, we're going to have chicken. And for her, she lived in a home where everyone cooked food. Mm -hmm. They had a, a, a chef in the house made the food. She cut up the chicken, put it into a big pot, and I, I, I find this hard to believe, but I, I hear it was true. She actually put um, soap. Because she had no clue what to do. She put soap, she put things through it, and then this thing is bubbling. Mm. And you know, so he heated soap. Mm. The whole kitchen was a mess, smelling horrendous. He walked in, saw that, and asked her, what is this? I'm making supper. This is not supper. And it ensued into, like, you know, you can't cook. And she goes, I actually can't cook. I don't know how to cook. And they stayed like that for two weeks. By the third week after the wedding, he took her back to the mother and said, please teach your daughter how to cook and then send her back to me. We're getting young ladies coming to us and saying, we don't know how to keep house. Mm. Those are the ones who are brave enough to admit. And they're in their 20s. But we're saying, go and get married. We're getting young men who are saying, we don't know how to be a husband. You know, what is a young man supposed to do? You know, they say men are supposed to be there providers of the family. What does that look like? What does that look like? Because the yes. women are providing for themselves. Yeah. Yeah. So what does it look like yeah. for me as a man yeah. to provide, to protect? What does that look like? And they don't know. Re Reverend, I am in, under so much pressure from everybody here to end this show. Yes. I have no idea. 
how we can continue this discussion, but we must. But my thought for yes. for all of us, Yani, this discussion hasn't ended, isn't mm. it? No, but, it's ongoing. But, but, this, but this show has to end. Yes. So thank you very much, Maria. I, I wanted to ask one more thing, but I, even a parting shot, I can't. Can. Maria, thank you. <laughs> Reverend, thank it you. It was a pleasure and an honor As to be always, here. Yes. I, I always love meeting the two of you, mm -hmm. both separately, good friends, great loves. Eh? Oh, bless you. Ladies, you can be single, you can rock it. Have a great week. Baraka. <laughs>